It's LeVac and Goss on 104.5 The Team. All right, my friends, it's Monday. It's a lot four o'clock, which means it's time to do Monday Mirages. Uh, Goss gives us a story from the world of sports. We decide whether it's real, meaning get used to it, or it's a mirage. It uh, may never happen again. Real or mirage, despite the loss, the New England Patriots are the best team in the NFL after Sunday's action. i got two games left to go, but are the Patriots the best team in the NFL, real or mirage? I, I say real. I, there's a lot you can forget about week one as the season goes on. And, look, when we're talking about the Patriots, it was just a couple years ago, they got stopped by the Kansas City Chiefs and then went on to win the Super Bowl with a chip on their shoulder. It's it's hard to put a chip on that team's shoulder if you're not Roger Goodell, but they can do it themselves. I think it's real. I think they're still the best. Real for me as well, but the line's a little closer. There's two teams I'm looking at in particular. We might get to in a bit here. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. If we did this schedule before the season thought, of all the teams, that's a bad matchup for the Patriots. Who could they lose to? You're right on. It's the Chiefs because we've seen it before. And somehow, some way, Andy Reid and the Chiefs organization has figured out a way to have success against New England. Real, but I don't know if it lasts the entire month. Real and Mirage, it's the Dallas Cowboys that are the best team in the NFC. NFC as a whole? NFC as a whole. Oh, that's a mirage, buddy. Oh, that's mirage. okay. Who's the best team in the NFC after week uh, one? It is either Seattle, Green Bay. I don't think the Cowboys are the best in the East. I think it's the Eagles. Wow. You think the Eagles are better than the Cowboys after? Yes. I mean, the Cowboys had more success last season. The Eagles haven't had it yet. No, I think the Cow- I think you'll see the Eagles. Now that there's wide receivers making catches on the field. Watch out for the Eagles this year. I mean, look, the Cowboys are really good. I'm not, I'm not trying to pretend they're not, um, but I, I just think the Eagles are better. And I, I think when it comes down to that, uh, to that NFC, uh, Green Bay is, is probably, it's probably the best. Green Bay and Dallas for me are really close right now. But I watched that Seattle Green Bay game. That was an ugly game to watch. Mm-hmm. Nobody could get in the end zone. Defenses were holding up. Both quarterbacks, Wilson and Rodgers, weren't at their best body stretch. Dallas was the only team who truly impressed me from the NFC. Then I think they have the total package across the board. For me, it's real. The Cowboys are the best, and especially that second half. How they just ate up that clock. Three yards and a cloud of dust, and then Zeke Elliott runs one for 20 yards. And Dak Prescott didn't play well, as we heard a bit earlier from Cowboy fans, but Des Bryant's still out there. I know you like the Eagles. I got to see the Eagles take down the Cowboys in a regular season game before I start giving Philadelphia that much credit as a top team in that conference. In Seattle, I probably would have said, I picked them to win the Super Bowl. I would have said real if Seattle had played better, but Seahawks didn't look too good. I picked Patriots over Seattle, I should say. Real and Mirage, the New York Jets will finish September with more offensive touchdowns than the New York Giants. Now, here's who the Jets have for the remainder of the month. The Raiders and the Dolphins. If the Giants have the Lions and the Eagles, Jets will have more offensive touchdowns than the Giants by the end of the month. Barrage. Barrage. The Giants, look, sky isn't falling. It's a bad week. OBJ wasn't there. The offensive line had their butts handed to them. <laughs> Give me Eli, Evan Ingram, Brandon Marshall, OBJ, and Sterling Shepard over Josh McCown, Robbie Anderson, Sharon Peak. Uh, Jeremy Curley, Malal Powell. It's not going to be a lot of touchdowns for either team. Yeah, <laughs> like the Lions are, the Lions looked okay. They looked really rough in that first half. The Eagles' defense is still right there, but the big factor, obviously, with the Giants, is it going to be Odell Beckham Jr. in the lineup or not? The Jets, you would think, at one point, if they're down like thirty-five to nothing to the Raiders, they might get a garbage time touchdown, and those count in this scenario. I'm going Mirage. But barely. Like it could be end up being like five to four or four to three. It's not gonna be more than three touchdown difference between the Jets and Giants before the end of the month, but barely, barely the Giants there. Real and Mirage, our roll this Chapman save on Saturday was the most important effort by a Yankee over the weekend. Real and Mirage. Uh Mirage, it's still Severino. He's become the stopper, he's become the the ace. He's become the guy that when he goes out on the mound, you know you're only going to need one, maybe two relievers. Uh, it, it was it was nice. I liked it. But 
he's still like, if Severino's on the mound, I, I feel like, okay, we're going to win that game. If Chapman's on the mound, I'm like, oh, dear God, hold on. And so, that's why, for me, it's real at the end, because you're hoping that it has to end at some point. Okay, when does the trust gained back for a role this Chapman? I don't care if you're a playoff team, a 500 team, or a team that's sitting 20 games below the 500 mark. If you can have your closer go out to the mound and you have confidence in him again, and maybe even more so important, the closer has confidence in themselves that they can close out a game. That is huge. He might be earning his job back in September. I thought it might happen. The fact that he picks up that save and doesn't get shelled, that would have been the storyline again in New York. Good for a role this Chapman and good for Girardi. Hopefully he's making his job easier. That when it's the ninth inning, they can turn to the flamethrower they're paying $85 million for to get those type of saves. I got two more for you. Real and Mirage, the Dodgers peaked too soon, and the Cleveland Indians are now peaking too soon. Um, Real Mirage. Okay. Uh, it's a rare double one here, yes. by the way. First time I ever had a double line here. All right, so why half and half? Well, I just, the Dodgers still haven't done anything in the postseason. You know what I mean? So Clayton Kershaw gets to the postseason, and he turns into a, a subpar pitcher. But it looks like that whole team just turned into a subpar team earlier. They're a young team. They're going to be streaky. I haven't seen anything that tells me they can pull up from the no spin they're in. So that's real. They're in trouble. The Indians, I don't know if, I don't know if this is peaking. Like, I just feel like the Indians are this good. Like, they're not going to go undefeated the rest of the way through, but they ain't going to lose a lot of games. They're just that good. Yes, and that's why it's a mirage both ways for me. If you're a good baseball team, then you're a good baseball team. You play 162 games this season, right? You can have stretches where you lose five, six, seven in a row. It happens. That's how the sport goes. And people would point to Cleveland and say, well, they're really good, and they've won 18 games in a row. Yeah. Because they're a better team than the other team. Remember when people said this about the Kentucky Wildcat basketball team? They're like, well, they're peaking too soon in the regular season. No, they're just better than everybody else. <laughs> That's the answer to this. That's why the Dodgers were so good early on, because they were better than everybody else. Mirage here, both teams can still make an impact when it comes to the postseason later on. Last one here. Real or Mirage? The Syracuse football team will win another game this season. <laughs> That's real. Do you want to hear some of the opponents? I'm looking at them. Okay. Well, you got Central Michigan. You're almost a ten, You're almost an 11 point favorite over Central Michigan. Okay, so you should win that one. But then after that, LSU, North Carolina State, Pitt, Clemson, Miami, Florida State, Wake Forest, Louisville. At least that's at Louisville, so you don't have to watch Lamar Jackson torch you in the dome. Oh, that's nice. And that's then strange. Boston College. You may only win three games this year. I'm not even positive they're going to win another one. they got they got to beat Central Michigan. Yeah, I would have said the same thing about Middle Tennessee State. And that didn't happen. What was the spread on Middle Tennessee State? They were a 10-point underdog. Just like Central Michigan. Okay, never mind. Maybe you won't. <laughs> No. Central Michigan looked good. I know everybody was watching the Chippewa. the Chippewas play and beat up on Kansas. They beat Kansas by 18 points over the weekend. Oh, man. Is that is that <sighs> it? I didn't get the answer. I don't even know how I want to answer this one. Uh, I'm going to say real. They'll win another game. But my confidence level, as you can hear, is not very high. How many more games are you going through this year? <sighs> That's a good question. Real and Mirage, I'll attend another game this year. <laughs> I have tickets to attend the rest of the home games, but... Uh, is anybody interested all, in selling them? Do you think you're at all responsible for them losing? Man, that tweet is not a good... When I tweet it out, can't wait to see them go 2-0 and and they don't win. I don't think I'm responsible for them losing, no. I haven't gone that far in my fandom yet. Okay. I'm not happy. What if you sold your tickets and then they won out? I sell home. them every year. <laughs> <laughs> that was your Monday Mirages. And uh, 